There are holes between the left and the right side ventricles. And sometimes they're very tiny. The tiny ones, many times, won't even close. Is that correct? The, the, we don't have to really close the real tiny ones. Correct. And sometimes Mother Nature does it for us. Is that true? That's absolutely true. Um, uh, being born with um, a hole in the lower chambers of the heart is probably one of the most common problems a child can be born with. However, it's, it's, you almost shouldn't call it a problem. And when I explain to parents, I say, this is a very common situation. Mother Nature will take care of this. And this small hole will likely get smaller, if not completely go away on its own. So the vast majority of holes in the heart do not need to be treated with medication or surgery, and just need to be closely followed by the pediatrician and the pediatric cardiologist, and often nothing will ever need to be done. And the bigger ones, which are giving the kids some trouble, how is that approached? The larger holes, if the child is having problems breathing and gaining weight, and those are the two most important things the pediatrician will look for. How is the child doing in terms of its feeding and gaining weight, and in terms of its breathing? If there are problems in that area, what is often done is the cardiologist will start the baby on medications. Medications that treat congestive heart failure, similar to what adults are put on. So in other words, the pump is not working well, it's failing a little bit. So it's helping the body do its job a little bit better, is that right. correct? What typically happens is the pump is actually okay, it's that you're asking this pump to do too much work. So it's inefficient. It's inefficient to keep up because overwork that... Overwork a little bit. Overwork because of that hole in the heart. It's making it pump extra blood. So the medication helps the heart, gives it a little extra boost. That sometimes is, is, is enough. However, in certain instances, what's need to be done is to surgically fix the hole and to sew it up. Okay, in Europe, we have, I don't think we're doing it here yet, they actually can do with catheterization, put a patch in the ventricles, is that true? That's correct. What's been done in this country for at least the past 10 years is closing holes in the upper chambers, so-called atrial septal defects, or ASDs. How big a hole can that be they can fix in the upper chamber? Close to two centimeters, which would be a little less than an inch. Um, holes that large can be closed but with this device. We are not approved for it in this country yet. For the upper, for the upper chambers. For the lower chamber. For the right. lower chambers, um, we're not approved yet, um, and that may happen in the future. Um, certainly, in this country, they they look long and hard. The FDA does as to what the risk and benefits are and long-term effects of these devices. And if you did put a little device in that closed the hole. It takes about, about six months for its cells to overlap it. So there's a concern that that area can lead to clotting. Is that true? There is some concern of that. You're right. Um, over several months, it will endothelialize. The natural tissue inside the heart will Overgrows cover up these. Overgrows and covers it up, right? We'll, we'll, we'll cover it up. Um, there is some concern that there could be um, bleeding, um, breaking down of the blood cells, or hemolysis. And these are the things that um, investigators are looking at right now to see if, if there is significant risk of so this. So they put on, on either some aspirin or anticoagulants to reduce that risk to some Correct. Degree. Most patients are put on for about six months aspirin therapy just to reduce this potential risk. But it looks like down the road that possibly we might even, with little catheters, maybe even fix the lower chambers. I think so. Um, typically what's done now is holes that are too far away for the surgeon to reach easily, the surgeon to open up the heart and so, are being referred for catheterization closure. Um, but I do foresee in the future, as with the holes in the upper chambers, that holes in the lower chambers, um, as long as the, as the location is not near any other important structures in the heart, being closed with a device and um, uh, avoiding the need for open heart surgery. And there's a thing we call hybrid type of surgeries, but the surgery, because we don't like these guys that evolve too much, because whatever they do, it's complicated. So sometimes we take a little catheter guy and a surgeon and they work together and they try to minimize the surgeon and do a little bit more catheterization type stuff and so we're now fine with having the kids less major surgery and keep it a little bit less toward complications and we're getting better results. Is that true? This, that, that is exactly correct and this is one of the most exciting areas in pediatric cardiology. There are certain situations where clearly a surgical approach is better and certain situations where a catheter approach is better but often you really need both to have the best outcome for the patients um, and now this is being done so efficiently that certain hospitals are designing 
operating room suites that are set up for a surgeon to use, but also bringing in the equipment that a catheterizer would need, because the equipment is different. And they're collaborating and working together. And this is really, I think, one of the, what you're going to see in the future, a lot more of this, as the interventionalists and the surgeons work together to provide the best care for the patients. And you think of these MIT uh, geeks with robotic type stuff and the techniques are getting really, really carefully controlled now, aren't they? That's true. And um, what's nice about this is it reduces um, your length of stay in the hospital. Um, it reduces the amount of pain. Um, it shortens the recovery time. Um, and for these reasons, this minimally invasive techniques, I think, are really helpful um, for the patient um, and the families as well.